Welcome to Math 140, the first lecture, 5.1. I am the instructor, Tiffany Haler. All right, so one of the main things that we look at for trig or trigonometry is the unit circle. Now, the unit circle, sort of where the name comes from, is a circle of radius 1. It has one unit in the xy plane centered at the origin, or 0, 0, with this equation known which means the x value, if you square the x value and you square the y value, you're always going to end up with 1. Okay. So, this is the xy plane, so I'm going to go ahead and label this xy. What do we know about the coordinate plane? Well, we have the four quadrants, right? Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. Now once again, always feel free to pause the video and take a little bit of time to soak things in as I tell them and replay the video if you need to. Okay, so we have these quadrants and what else do we know? Well, we know that the radius is always going to be 1. So this point here, talking about my radius of my circle, from this point to this point, hopefully that blue shows up, that distance is 1. Well, what does that mean? That means that the point here, xy, is going to be 1 comma 0. So let's go ahead and label these other four important points, or the other three important points. So the next one up here is going to be 0, 1, because the x value is at 0 and the y value is at 1. Remember we have the coordinates x, y. Next we have negative 1, 0, and what do you think the last one is? Oh yeah, the last one is 0, negative 1. Okay, so we have those points. Now what do we know? As we mentioned, the radius is 1. So let me go ahead and draw something right here. So if we have a radius of 1, which we've already said, it's always going to be 1, and we have some triangle formed when we do this. Now the triangle will have one leg length of y and another leg length. Let me go ahead and do a little bit of racing here. Another leg length of x. We don't actually know what they are at the moment, but x and y. And we know with the Pythagorean theorem, right, when you have a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem states that your leg squared plus your other leg squared should equal your radius. And in our case, the radius is 1. Okay, so that's kind of where the equation came from with the unit circle. Another thing to note, the x value is always going to be in between positive and negative 1, and so is the y values. They will always be in between 1, because they're within this unit circle. Now, one other thing that we know that's important. So besides the coordinate points, we also, let me go ahead and erase this here, talk about the uh, circumference, or the outer arc, I guess you could say, of the circle the outer area. Let me go ahead and do that, highlighting real quick so you know what I'm talking about. This outer area right here. The circumference, right, of a circle. What do we know about the circumference of a circle? Well, the circumference of a circle is c equals 2 pi r. But now for the unit circle, remember, what is our radius? The radius for the unit circle is 1. So when we plug that in for our specific circle here, so a radius of 1, we get that the circumference of our unit circle is 2 pi, which means this whole distance, let me draw that in, ooh, let's see what color, green. If I start here and I travel all the way around, all the way, trying not to draw through things, I'll come back and I'll have made a distance of 2 pi. Well, let's see if we can label a few of the other important points. Let's label the other three important ones. There are going to be more important ones as we go along, but right now let's focus on these. If I go only halfway and I end up over here, how far have I gone? Well, that's just going to be half of 2 pi. What's half of 2 pi? Well, that's just pi. Now, if I do just half of pi, how far would that be at this point here? That is going to be pi over 2, because it's half of pi. Now the other one, a way of counting it is, if we count the number of halves, let's see, so this is 1 half up to here, 1 half, 2 halves gives me pi, and then right over here we get to 3 halves. So 
3 over 2 pi, or sorry, 3 pi over 2. Alrighty, so those are the, um, at the moment right now, those are the other important points we're going to look at right now. Once again, there are more coming, but those are some of the main important ones. So one of the thing, uh, skills that's going to be really helpful is fractions. Knowing how to work with fractions and counting fractions. So make sure you brush up on that skill if you're maybe a little shaky on it. Alright, so now let's take a look at some of the examples. For the first example, we're going to show that this point, 3 over 7, negative 2 root 10 over 7, is on the unit circle. Well, how would we prove that? We need an equation. And thankfully, we have an equation. So the equation of our unit circle is right here, or the one we're given over there. x squared plus y squared equals 1. How am I going to use that, though? Well, if I plug the points I'm given into this equation and it equals 1, then I know it's on the circle. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to try and use that, so let's go with x squared plus y squared and see what we get. Okay, so my x value is going to be the 3 over 7, and my y value is going to be the negative 2 root 10 over 7. So x is going to be the 3 over 7 squared, plus, and my y value is the negative 2 root 10 over 7 squared. Okay, so simplifying this, what do we get? We'll get 9 over 49 plus, let's see, the square is going to distribute to the negative 2 as well as to the 10 and to the 7. And we'll get, so the negative will become a positive, so it'll be 4 times the 10, because that radical disappeared from the 10, um, divided by 49. Okay, so that's going to equal 9 plus 49, oops, sorry, 9 plus 40, divided by 49, which is, ooh, 49 over 49, which is equal to 1. So, yes, it's on the unit circle. Once again, how do we know it's on the unit circle? Well, we plugged the two points in, and we ended up with the answer of 1, which means it's on the unit circle because the radius is 1. Now let's take a look at a slight variation of this problem. So for example 2, the point 1, 5, y is on the unit circle in quadrant 4. Find the y coordinate. Interesting, so this is a little sneakier. Well, what do we know? As usual, for the unit circle, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. And we are trying to find y. Are we given x? Yeah, we are. We're given x. Good. So we're given x, which means if we plug that in for x, we can manipulate the equation and solve for y. Alright, let's plug that in. Plus the y squared equals 1. Then we get y squared plus, that's going to be 1 over 25, equals 1. Let's move the 25 to the other side, so we get y squared equals 1 minus 1 over 25. Now, we're going to go ahead and add these two together. So I'm slightly skipping a step here, but we can turn the 1 into 25 over 25. That's just a side work there. You don't need to write that down. So then we get y squared is 24 over 25. Now to solve, and one thing I'm going to do, which um, please use on your work as well to make your work neat while I'm grading it, See this arrow here? That just indicates where you've moved the problem. Please go ahead and do that if you can't continue going downward for solving. Just indicate where you've gone. Just makes it a way easier when grading. All right, so we've moved over there for working on this. Now we have the y squared equals 24 over 25. How do we solve that? Well, it's quadratic. We'll go ahead and use the square root property. So we'll take the square root of both sides. Remember that plus or minus sign that you have to put in when you take the square root. Let me go ahead and highlight that. That is an important thing because remember that's two different answers. So when we do that, those cancel and we're left with y equals plus or minus the square root of 24 over 25. Which, when we simplify that, so that's the square root of 24 over 5 which, once again, let's see, 24 is 4 times 6, which will come out to 2 root 6 over 5. 
Once again, all these small little manipulations I've been doing, if you're having any trouble with those, feel free to reach out to me and I can give you some supplemental material for that. But those are things that we are um, assuming that you have down coming into Math 140. Once again, if you need to brush up on them, feel free to reach out to me. All right, so what do we, which one do we choose? Do we choose the positive or the negative? Because remember, there's two answers, the positive or the negative version. Well, let's take a look at the other hint they give us. They say quadrant four. What do we know about quadrant four? I'm going to go ahead and highlight it right here. This is quadrant four. What do we know about the values in quadrant four? Well, the x is a positive and the y is a negative. That is for the values in quadrant four. And since we're looking for the y value, that must mean we'll take the negative value for our y. So we take the negative value and that is our answer. And you know, as I go ahead and solve, feel free to pause the video and try solve by yourself and then check my answer after. It's a good practice as well. So now let's look at something called the terminal point on the unit circle. So what is that? Well, it's the point corresponding to a distance, t, on the unit circle from the point 1, 0. So this is talking about if we're tracing along the circle. Okay? So up along like that, tracing along it. So what is this? Well, if t is positive, what do we know? So if t is positive, starting from 1, 0, we're going to move counterclockwise, which basically just looks like we start here and we move in that direction. If we're looking for t, that's a negative, so t is negative, they're going to move clockwise from our starting point. Once again, we always start at 1, 0. So moving counterclockwise, we'll just head in that direction, depending on if we're given a positive or a negative t. So for example, Let's say we're told to find the terminal point for t equals negative, sorry, not negative, positive pi over 2. Well, where is pi over 2? Remember, we found that earlier, way back in the beginning. Pi over 2 is right up at the top. So pi over 2 is over here. Let's go ahead and put that. So that's pi over 2, which means my terminal point, since it's positive, we're going to be heading counterclockwise. So we'll go pi over 2. That's that distance there. What is that point? Well, we found that earlier as well. That point is 0, 1. Okay, so that would be our answer, 0, 1. Ooh, that looked a little weird. Let me fix that. Pen is a little slow. OK, 0, 1. Another thing too, always make sure to box your answer or indicate somehow that it's your answer, either if you box it or you circle it or something like that, especially when the work starts to get really complicated. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say find t equal to negative pi over 2. Ooh, we see that negative, and we're talking about a terminal point. So that negative means we're going to go counterclockwise. How far? Well, pi over 2 distance far. Okay, so going pi over 2 distance, that means we're going to end up down here. Don't worry, I know we said earlier that's 3 pi over 2, but that was when we were talking about going from the other direction. Okay, so if we're going from clockwise, that is going to actually be just the distance of pi over 2. That's how far away it is, pi over 2 distance. So that we have there the negative pi over 2, and what point was that? We found that earlier as well. That point was 0, negative 1. So there, my terminal point for negative pi over 2. OK, now let's take a look at example 3. Find the terminal point for t equals pi over 4. Well, first off, we want to figure out where pi over 4 would be before we find the points for it. Well, let's go ahead and look at the main points we do know, or the main radiuses. Not radiuses, sorry, the circumference outside. So we have 0 over here, and then we know we have pi over 2 here. Pi over 2, and then we had pi, and then we had 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 2. So where would pi over 4 fall? Well, pi over 4 is actually, 
is half of pi over 2. Because if we multiply pi over 2 by a half, we'll end up with a fourth. So it's directly in half. It's right here, pi over 4. Okay, good, we found that. The next thing we need to do is find the x and y coordinates. But how do we do that? We don't really know any of the other coordinates except for the main ones, which were, if you remember, 0, 1, wrong way, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. These are the four main ones we know at the moment. So how will we find the other one? Well, let's go ahead and use that same concept with the triangle. Remember, we know that the radius is 1, and it creates a right triangle with some y value and some x value. This is something that we do know. But one of the nice things here is it's perfectly in the middle, so our x and y value are actually going to be the same. So we have that x and y are the same value for pi over 4, and one other equation we know is that x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is always the main one we use when we're finding things for the coordinate points. Okay, so in some ways this is a system. Yay, systems are back! Alright, so how would we solve a system? Well, you can use substitution, and we're going to go ahead and do that. So, we could either find x or y first. It doesn't actually matter here, we need both of them. I'm going to go ahead and find, um, let's say, y first. Why not? So, we know that x equals y. Well, we have an x here, so let's go ahead and substitute that y value in. We'll sub that in. And rewrite this. So now, when we subbed it in, we have replaced the x squared with y. Why can we do that? Well, because they're equal. They're the same thing. It doesn't matter if we interchange them. So now we have 2y squared. So we'll let's go ahead and rewrite that that way. So we have 2y squared equals 1. Solving for y, we'll go ahead and divide both sides by 2, and we get that y squared equals a half. Ooh, we're running into the same thing. This is going to be really handy. Always remember you can use the square root property. But remember, when you use it, you need to include that plus or minus. That is very important because there are two possible answers. So that helps cancel out that square, and we're left with y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. Ooh, but we're not done. We can't have a fraction in a radical, and we also cannot have a radical in the denominator, because when I simplify this, that's going to be 1 over the square root of 2. I need to rationalize this. Let me go ahead and continue my work up here, so I'll draw that arrow. Helps you know where I'm going. Once again, please um, get into a habit of making sure your work is easy to read for the people that are trying to read it. So either anyone you're explaining it to or just when you're writing it for your exam. Okay, so there we go. Ooh, okay, yeah. So we cannot have that radical in the denominator. So how do we get rid of that? We're going to rationalize it. We'll multiply it by square root of 2 and square root of 2. Once again, if you're trying to remember how the rationalization goes, just send me an email and I'll send you a few practice problems if you'd like. Or I'll just explain it to you with an office hour or something. That would be over the square root of 4, and that simplifies to plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, but shucks, we have two answers for y. How do we know which one we want? Well, we're looking at the first quadrant right there. And in the first quadrant, remember, x and y are both positives. So we're going to go ahead and take that positive value for our answer, which means that y is going to equal the square root of 2 over 2. Well, what does x equal? Well, if you recall in the beginning, x is the same thing as y. So I'll say solving for x. Now, the reason I write this is because if I just start solving for x directly below my work, it's a bit confusing. So I always just write a little indication if I'm changing what I'm doing. So we know that x equals y, which is the same thing as the square root of 2 over 2. Now, my final answer, though, remember, we're looking for a coordinate point, or the terminal point in this case. So it needs to be in the coordinate notation. And the coordinate notation is going to be the xy notation. So we go ahead and write that as our final answer. And you notice, they are the exact same. Square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. And that is our terminal point for pi over 2. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is fill in all of the terminal points on the unit circle. And now, notice, we have found all the other important values. 
These are the main important values that we're going to be using quite a bit. So definitely something to get memorized. And there's actually an easy way to memorize it. And I'll go ahead and explain that in a sec. But notice real quick, we have the main items that we were using previously. So pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. After that, there are three other types. Let's try to break this down and make it simpler. There are the pi over 6s. Okay. Then we have the pi over 4s. And lastly, the pi over 3s. Okay, those are the main different types of 1s. So what I'm going to do first is give you the terminal points for the values in the first quadrant. Once you know the values in the first quadrant, you can very easily find the values in all the other quadrants. You might wonder how. Well, I'll tell you that in a few seconds. All right, so let me go ahead and write this down. So in the first quadrant, we already know these two here. Actually, those technically aren't on the quadrant, but I'll go ahead and write them down. So we know 0, 1 and 1, 0. We already know those. So just three more to know. And then once we know these three, if you just memorize the pattern, you'll know all the rest. Not bad, huh? Okay, so the other three. Well, we already figured out the first one, which was pi over 4. So let me go ahead and write that one down. That was the square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Which doesn't seem that bad. They're only 2s, right? All right, so then the square root of or sorry, then pi over 3. What is a terminal point for that? That is going to be 1 half root 3 over 2. Now there are ways to prove how to find these, but that was a little more than I thought we'd need to do in this video, so we're just going to stick to this. Okay, so once you've memorized that one, the easiest thing for pi over 6 is it's literally the reverse of these two values, the x and y is reverse. So that'll be root 3 over 2, and a half. Okay, so if you have all of these memorized, once again, I promised you, there's an easy way to figure out what the other ones are. All it has to do with what the signs are in the other quadrants. So remember, in quadrant one, x and y are both positive. How about quadrant two? Well, the x, now we're in the negative side for x values over here. Those are the negatives. So we'll have a negative x, but the y is going to be positive. So all we do is we take our x values and we make them negative. But they're all going to stay the same exact numbers. So we have negative th re, uh, root 3 over 2, half, negative root 2 over 2, positive root 2 over 2, and then half root 3 over 2, and that should be a negative half. Okay, that's not bad. It's literally the exact same numbers. You just have to be careful of your sign. Now, what do you think the signs are for quadrant 3? Well, for quadrant 3, remember, x and y are both negatives. So once again, we'll just write down the values as we were before, and they'll be the negatives. But notice here, it's kind of flipped. But we're just going to continue to match up the pi over 6s to each other. And then the pi over 4s and the pi over 3s. So this is going to be negative root 3 over 2, negative half. That'll be the negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, such small numbers. And lastly, negative half, negative 3 over 2. Okay, we're almost done. So quadrant 4, what are the signs in quadrant 4? X's are positive and Y's are negative. Let's go ahead and copy these down. Just remembering that the X's are positive and the Y's are negative. Okay, that came from there, just copying that down and so on and so forth. So pretty much, as I said earlier, as long as you have quadrant one memorized and you know the pattern, you don't need to spend time really memorizing the other ones as much. At least that's what I found helped me when I was taking trig myself. Okay, and lastly, negative half root three over two. Okay, so there we go, we have filled out the unit circle. This is very good to know how to fill it out it may or may not show up on an exam. So bear that in mind. Okay, so now we want to find something called the reference number. So earlier we were talking about a terminal point, and that's the actual point. 
that we're talking about, right? Like an xy coordinate value. Now the reference number is going to be something along the circumference or the outside of the circle. It's actually something that's on the circle or also called an arc length. Let me go ahead and write that down, arc length. Okay, so the reference number, for any real number t, the reference number, t bar, we say t bar, is the shortest distance between the x-axis and t. Okay, so remember t is talking about, let's say pi over 2 or pi, which he had seen previously, pi over 2 and pi, and then 3 pi over 2. Those would be the t values. And then the reference number, t bar, is the distance between that item and the x-axis. Okay? And this. So, what would the distance be, let's say, maybe for pi? Well, pi is directly on it, so there actually wouldn't be a distance between it. It would be zero. But pi over two, we have two ways. We would either do that distance or the other distance. And you might say, gosh, which one do we pick? But remember, it's directly between the two, so it wouldn't matter. You would pick either side. Same for 3 pi over 2. But what about some other value here that we're not certain of? How would we find the distance? So what we're going to do is find a general formula for finding t bar, or the arc length, depending on where t is. Okay, so we want to be able to find t bar depending on where t is. And usually, sorry if you hear any chicken noises, I do live in the country. So you might hear them in the back of my recordings in the future. Just forgive them. All right, getting back to the math. Okay, so what we're going to do is find a general formula given for the t bar with t greater than zero in the following quadrants. Once again, we have three, sorry, four different quadrants. So we'll look at the first one, quadrant one. How would we find the distance? Well, let's say we have some random t value and we want to find the shortest distance to the x-axis. And remember, the x-axis is right here. So the shortest distance would be going this direction, not going the other direction. That would be longer. So we wouldn't look at that. We'd look at the shortest distance. Well, the formula for that is just going to be t. So t bar, if we're looking at quadrant 1, is just going to be exactly equal to t. So if we're looking for maybe pi over 2, t bar would be pi over 2. It's pretty simple. So first quadrant, pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the second quadrant. Quadrant 2. So that's when we're looking over here. Let me just go ahead and do that. So quadrant 2, once again we're always referring back to the x-axis. Now we're looking for some random t value here and we want to find the distance to the x-axis. How do we find that? Well, the shortest distance is going to be t bar equals pi minus t. Now, why does that make sense? Well, remember, the whole distance here is pi. So to figure out the small red chunk, what we'll do is we'll take pi and we'll take the t value away from it, and we'll find out the reference number for t. Okay, so those are the first two. We have quadrant one and quadrant two down for finding the reference numbers. Now, quadrant three. How would we find the reference number? Well, we have some value, let's say right here, t, and we want to find the reference number, or the distance to the x-axis. And we're looking in this quadrant. Well, originally, we start from here, and it's going to go all the way around to there. We're trying to figure that out. So how would we find that? Well, we're going to take our t value and subtract from it pi this time. So we're going to take away all of that, and then we would find our reference number. So have t bar equals t minus pi. Let me go ahead and write that down. And that's how you'd find the reference number. The last one, looking at quadrant 4. So quadrant 4, we're looking over here, some t value in here. We're trying to find the reference number 4. Once again, we're looking at the distance between that 
and the x-axis. So some values starting here, going all the way around to there. And we want to find the reference point, or the reference number. Well, to find that, we're just going to take 2 pi and subtract from it t. It does take a little bit, so what I did when I was learning this is I just sort of sat through it and rethought a few of them. So sometimes when I go over it in the video, it might be a little quick. Always remember you can pause and re-listen to the videos. But once again, recapping for quadrant 4. You're going to take your 2 pi value, and once you erase all of the rest of t, you'll be left with the whole value. So we took away the t value, and we found the reference value. All right, let me go ahead and box those. Those are important. Finding the reference numbers. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and skip example 6 for this time. And we'll go, go ahead and take a look at example 7. So finding the reference number for t. Alright, so first example, we have t equals 4 pi over 3. And we're trying to find the reference number. Now what should we do? Well, what we're going to do first is discover which quadrant t is in. And once we've figured out which quadrant it's in, we'll go ahead and use one of our general formulas from above to solve for it. So 4 pi over 3. Well, 4 pi over 3, hmm. What I'm going to do is try to find a way to count along this. So I know in general, we have our usual tick marks for our unit circle, right? If you take a look at the unit circle, we'll have pi over 6 here then pi over 2, and then pi over 3. And notice, as usual, you're going to see this more than likely, time and time again, using quadrant 1 to find the other items is really helpful. So what we can do is we can use either base 6, or sorry, denominator 6, denominator 2, or denominator 3, and we're going to count out how many pi's, or versions of pi's, to get to 4 pi over 3. Now we could use pi over 3 and try to count that out, but that tends to be a bit harder. So I'm going to convert my number here into something over 6. And then I'll count by pi over 6's. So to convert this to 6, we'll go ahead and multiply the bottom by 2 and the top by 2, and we'll get 8 pi over 6. So let's count that out. How many pi's over 6 are there? Before I do that, let me take away the pi over 2's. Okay. So pi over 6's. We want 8. So starting here, we'll get 1 pi over 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Sorry, they're not spaced out perfectly, but that would be 8 pi over 6. That's how many pi over 6's there are once I start here and count this way. All right, what quadrant are we in? We are in the third quadrant. Quadrant 3, which means we're going to use the formula t bar, oh, let me rewrite this in a different color, t bar equals pi, or sorry, t minus pi. So what was our t value? Well, t value is 4 pi over 3. And we're going to subtract pi from it. So I'm going to go ahead and make the same common denominator. So that'll be 3 pi over 3. And 4 pi over 3 minus 3 pi over 3 is going to give me pi over 3. So my reference number is pi over 3. That is how far away my t value is from the axis. Once again, what is my reference number saying? That is just saying that this value here, 8 pi over 6, or, remember, 4 pi over 3, that is a distance of pi over 3 away from my x-axis. That's telling me how far it is away from my x-axis. All right, now let's take a look at the next example. Ooh, this is interesting. This is the negative 3 pi over 4. All right, so when it's a negative, what we're going to do is we're going to be going the opposite direction from the other ones because we're talking about a negative here. And let's see, how many should we count in? Remember, on the unit circle, we either have a 6's, or we have that pi over 2's, or we have 3's. Let's go ahead and use pi over 4 because our denominator is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and count in 4's. So let me tick out, or make the tick marks for pi over 4's. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible ones. And since it's negative, we're going to be going in 
clockwise fashion. So how many of them are we talking about? We're talking about three. So of one, two, three pi over fours. This is what we're talking about. Now this is where it starts to get a little confusing. So because we had a negative value here, we need to really think about which direction we came from. Because if you recall, all of our directions here were if we were starting from our zero one and going in the counterclockwise direction. That's what all of them were talking about, going in the counterclockwise. But what we just did when we were working with a negative is we went with cl clockwise direction. So how far have we gone here? Well, if we went all the way along, we would go pi. That would be our distance, would be pi. And we want to figure out this small little smidgen here, which would be the distance between the x-axis and the number I'm trying to find, which is 3 pi over 4. So to find that, we're just going to take pi and subtract from it the 3 pi over 4. So I'll go ahead and do that. So we have pi, the t bar is going to equal pi, minus 3 pi over 4. And you might say, why aren't we doing minus minus? Well, because we're just going that distance of 3 pi over 4, the negative just tells us we're going the opposite direction. Okay, so if t bar is going to equal pi minus 3 pi over 4, so let's make the denominators the same. The building up property here, so we have 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 is just pi over 4. And there we have our reference number for t. All right, now let's take a look at the next one. t is equal to 3.5. Well, that's a little weird. 3.5. Hmm. Let's think. Um, three points sounds familiar. Well, we're talking about a circle that the whole circumference is how much? 2 pi. Now, what is 2 pi? 2 pi is going to be 2 times roughly 3.14 dot dot dot, right? And that's going to be, let me just go ahead and multiply that out. So, that'll be 2 times. 3.14, which is 6.28. Okay, that's definitely too big for my 3.5. I know it's not bigger than that. Next we have pi, and pi is going to equal 3.14. But 3.5 is bigger than that, so I know 3.5 is somewhere on this side, either in the quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what this would roughly be. What would be 3 pi over 2? 3 pi over 2 is going to roughly come out to, let's do this, 3 times 3.14 divided by 2 is about 4.71. Okay, so 3.5 is in between these two, which means it's in quadrant 3. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, we figured that out. So we know that t is somewhere in here. I'm not certain where, but I'm just going to go ahead and say roughly. t is about here, so t equal to 3.5 is somewhere in quadrant 3. Now, how do we find the reference number? Well, the formula for quadrant 3, if we're going the normal direction, is going to be t minus pi. So we'll use t minus pi, so t bar is going to equal t minus pi, which will be 3.5 minus pi. And you know what? We can't simplify that any further. We're going to use the exact answer right there. We're not going to use the... Um, abbreviating, not abbreviating, sorry. We're not going to use the approximation for pi. And there we go, that is our reference number. Once again, if you ever have any questions on these, please let me know. Send me an email, and we can set up an office hour or something like that to go over any of the problems. Now, last example, example 8. Find the terminal point for t. Okay, so we are given t, and in this one we have 4 pi over 3. So what are the terminal points? Remember, those are the values on the circle where we had, let's see, you know, root 2, root 2, and so on like that, and then root 3 over 2, 1 over 2, things like that. That's what we're talking about now when we're talking about the terminal points. Think of a point. That usually helps me remember it. Now we're looking for the point at 4 pi over 3. Well, 4 pi over 3... I usually like a visual, so I'm going to try to figure out where this is on the quadrant, or on the unit circle, sorry. We already kind of did it earlier, though. So 4 pi over 3, we found out, was down here. 
So it's down here, 4 pi over 3. And if we use the way we memorized things before, remember as long as you memorize the first quadrant, you can find the other ones. So we have the quadrants here, so that's root 3 over 2, half, and then the other one was here, the exact reverse, so that's definitely easy. Now what we're doing is this was for pi over 6, that's for pi over 2, and that's for pi over 3. Now I'm looking for pi over 3 because I have 4 pi over 3, which means I'm going to be using this quadrant point. But I'm in quadrant 3, which means the x and y values are both negatives. So for 4 pi over 3, I'm going to have negative half and negative root 3 over 2 as my answer. Let me go ahead and write that out a little better. Okay. So this is one of the ways to find it. There are a few other ways, but I just like using the visual and drawing it out. So if you use the visual, you draw out the little diagram for me, that is perfectly acceptable work. If you choose any of the methods, please make sure to show your work for the method that you choose. And there we go, our answer. In the coordinate point, remember the parentheses are important for the coordinate notation. Now let's take a look at b. 3 pi, sorry, negative 3 pi over 4. So I think we just found this one too. That one we figured out. So as usual, I'm going to go ahead and draw the unit circle. Well, somewhat of a circle, a little more of a potato right now. And I'll go ahead and fill out. What do I need? Well, I'm talking about pi over 4. So my denominator is a 4. So I'm just going to focus on that. Well, I know for pi over 4, it's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. That one's pretty simple. Now, 3 pi over 4s, let's see how many over we go. 1. Oh, wait, back up real quick. We're talking about a negative 3 pi over 4. So that, we found out earlier, as I did say, was down here. 3 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4. Well, to find the point, or the terminal point, all we do is we copy down what we have from quadrant 1, which is the root 2, root 2. And since it's in quadrant 3, we're going to take the negative. So we'll just write those values down, but take the negatives. Why? Because it's in quadrant 3. Now we're going to take a look at 13 pi over 6. Well, that's unusual. Hmm. Let's go ahead, though, and draw our unit circle. Now we're really looking at 6 as our denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the coordinates for pi over 6, or the points for pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2 half. Now we could spend a long time counting out pi over 6's to finally end up at the right point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to whittle away at this a little more and take out a few pi over 2's. So let's go ahead and do that. So 13 pi over 6, and we're going to take away 2 pi. Well, when we do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the building up property. So that'll end up being, let's see, building up, let's multiply by 6, multiply by 6. And we'll end up with 13 pi over 6 minus 12 pi over 6 is going to be, ooh, just pi over 6. Hey, what do you know? If I had spent the whole time counting out, and what do I mean by counting out? Well, you could just count out all the pi over 6s until you get 13 pi over 6. You would actually just end up right back at pi over 6. Because remember, this is a circle. You do kind of just go round and round when you're counting out the different pi values. So we'll just end up at pi over 6. And so we have root 3 over 2. 1 half is our terminal point. All right, let's go ahead and tackle the last one for 5.1. We're there. OK, so one thing to really notice, always pay attention to positive and negatives, because this one is a negative, which means we're going to be going the other direction when we're trying to find the terminal point. But as usual, I'm still going to draw the unit circle. And let's see, we want to go negative 20 pi over 3. So, as usual, I like to either count in um, denominators of 
four or six, because counting in three is hard. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this to six. Oops, to do that, I'll multiply top and bottom by two. Which means I'll get negative 40 pi over six. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and start counting in this direction all of the pi over sixes that I have until I counted out 40 pi over sixes, and that's where I would end up. Now, that's a lot of work. It would work, but it is kind of a lot, and you can make mistakes when you're counting out 40 times. So we're going to try another method, just like we did with the earlier one for C. We're going to start subtracting away by two pies and see what we end up with. Except in this case, we're actually going to be adding two pies. Because if we subtracted, we would get deeper into the negatives. So we're going to add um, by versions of two pi until we get to something that's more manageable, usually within two pi, to count. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative 40 pi over 6, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to be adding by some version of 2 pi. Since we have a denominator of 6, let's go ahead and change that. Do the building up property, we'll put the multiply top and bottom by 6, which gives us negative 40 pi all over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. And uh, let's see, what would I get there? That's going to be negative 28 over 6 pi. That's still a long ways off. So you know what, I'm going to speed this up a little bit by adding multiples of our 12 pi over 6. So let's go ahead and do that. So multiples of that, how about um, 24 pi over 6? That's two of them. And that should bring us down to the right amount that we need. So once again, I'm just adding more multiples of 2 pi. So let's go ahead and add 24 pi over 6. Basically, once again, the way you could look at that is I just added, I'll go ahead and write this, I just added 12 pi over 6 two more times. Okay, So that's a shortcut way of doing that. The green work, you wouldn't normally show that. So then we'll end up with negative 4 pi over 6. And negative 4 pi over 6 simplifies to negative 2 pi over 3. Aha, so we have found the direction. That is within the normal 2 pi, and that is way easier to count than 40 pi over 6, at least in my opinion. like to work with the smaller numbers if possible. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and count that out, negative 2 pi over 3s which actually it'd be easier to count if I'd stayed in the denominator of 6. So for the sake of counting it out, I'm going to go ahead and count with the denominator of 6 for counting. However, if you're answering, this would be your simplified answer. Okay, always simplify your answers. So counting out by pi 6s. So we have 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. That is negative 4 pi over 6. Remember, we're going the opposite direction because we're in the negatives. All right, what does that point correspond to? Well, if we look at the usual pi over 6 coordinate point, that is root 3 over 2, 1 half. And since we're once again in quadrant 3, which I seem to favor here, it's just going to be the negatives of all of that. So negative root 3 over 2, negative half. And there we go. Box your answers. And there we have the terminal point for T. So that is it for 5.1. Please email me if you have any questions.